Hi everyone, welcome back. This is the intermediate tutorial for OneNote use. I'm Kim Farrell. I'm an English language arts teacher at Sarasota Middle School and I will be functioning in the OneNote app only. It is very similar to OneNote online. I just prefer to use the app. So in the beginner video, we downloaded the app and we pinned it to our taskbar. So you should have access to the notebook that you created from the beginner tutorial here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, I kind of did this in the beginner video, but as I said before, the notebook setup suggestions. If you've set up your notebook by chapter, um, your student notebooks will have chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. My notebook is set up a little bit different because my class functions a little bit differently. And so I have vocab, classwork, essays, novels, etc. On my student notebook, I have all of my students here and you can collapse the students to make it easier to scroll through them. And then if you just need to look at one student's name, you can pop open their notebook and check their specific work. So that's a nice feature to be able to collapse the student notebooks and then open them again just by clicking on their names. I'm gonna show you how to create a page. Um, I will create a blank page in my, sorry, I was practicing, in my um, vocab section and set up um, my lesson five vocab so that you can see how to create a new page. So the student sections in my content library match. I have done this on purpose. I wanted it to look familiar to the students and for whatever reason, if they have a vocab page, maybe so they don't have lesson four and they can't get it, they have the ability to go into the content library and drag and drop the lesson four into their own notebooks. That way, if they accidentally delete something, they just know exactly where to go of where to find it. When I drag and drop it, it actually moves it. When the students drag and drop it, it just copies it. So I already have my lesson four created. So we're gonna create a new page and I'm gonna show you some of the basic functionalities of what you can do here. So I'm gonna create my lesson five vocab page. Now, the first thing that I want to do is I, when I create it, put the PDF of the vocab book at the top. So if you want to insert a PDF, you have a couple of options. You can just attach the file, which is what I'm going to do. But in a moment, I'll attach a printout so that you can see exactly what's on the page. You can also insert photos. So if it's a JPEG file, online videos, a link to a website, an audio recording of yourself or the students can in turn record audio and submit it on these pages as well as other um, math and um, meeting type details. So the first thing we're going to do is insert a file. And I'm going to go ahead and go to my eighth grade Rev Vocab. And this is where I have my PDFs of the book. So I'm going to choose my lesson five PDF of the book. And I'm going to insert it as an attachment. You could also choose the printout feature here, but I'm gonna just insert mine as an attachment and I'm gonna drag and drop it. This essentially functions as one large page. So if I zoom out, I have all the room in the world to put my materials. The next thing that I want to do is add my Quizlet link. So I'm going to go to my Quizlet and I've created a lesson five Quizlet for eighth grade vocabulary. So I'm gonna go through my Quizlets. I'm gonna find lesson five. And I'm gonna take this link from the top and copy it. And I'm just gonna go, I want it right next to that PDF and I'm going to paste it in. And this is what it'll look like. The image, I'm gonna shrink that, it'll, it'll refresh the image. And that way my Quizlet link functions right there for the student. 
The next thing that I want to insert is a printout of the vocab words themselves. They are available in the book, and I'll open the book in a moment and show you that, but I want to make it available so it's kind of like one-stop shopping. So I'm going to find my definitions, and I'm going to choose my lesson five and click open. And now it is going to provide the PDF as well. I don't want that in my notebook because I have the printout right there, but it makes it a printout and a PDF. And I'm going to drag this up a little bit and make it a little bit smaller and then go back to the, the sizing of the page that I want. So now the students have the word list. They've got the book. So if I double click on this PDF, it's going to open the copy of the book that I have. It's just an Adobe um, PDF that they can zoom in and out of that I've provided for them. And then they can also click on the Quizlet link and open up the Quizlet. So it really makes it nice to have one-stop shopping there for their work. One really useful tool is if you want them to write on this. I have my students label the parts of speech of each word. And when it's a PDF like this, it's going to move around when they click on it and not give them easy text boxes to use. So one very useful tool is if you have a PDF that you've put in that you would like them to write over, you can right click on the PDF and go down a little bit to set picture as background. This is going to make it so it cannot be clicked on, it cannot be moved, and anywhere they type or click, you can click anywhere and write verb and move it to the correct word. And they can do that for any word. So that is a very useful tool to be able to set the PDF as the background. So if you were to have a PDF that's a worksheet that you want them to put answers on, it makes it much easier to do that. If you, for example, maybe you're a Spanish teacher or a language teacher and you want to insert an audio recording of you speaking, you can click the audio button and insert a recording of you speaking through your computer microphone. Then if you wanted, you could have the students do the same thing. They can record themselves also speaking the paragraph or sentence and put it on there. And then when you collect and grade this page, you'll have their audio recording available to you. Another useful tool um, that's pretty basic in OneNote is the draw tab over here. So we've, we've covered the insert tab and um, table is just a standard table size. So if you wanted to insert a chart of the novel, the name of author, or however you want them to complete the work, you can insert a table as well. But one thing I really like and the kids really like is the draw tool. They think it's fun. So I try to utilize it when possible. There are quite a few um, highlighter options, pencil options, marker options. I'm going to click on the marker. In some, on some devices, you might need to click the pointer finger. I know on our student devices, we do have to have them do that in order to be able to draw. And then you could have them circle their favorite vocab word. Or you could have them highlight the nouns in yellow and the verbs in blue. I know that's not correct but um, they can easily erase if needed. Um, they can circle answers. They can highlight uh, annotations. So if you have a text, so for example, I'm gonna hop over just to show you the tool um, in our classwork. I am having them do the Raven very shortly. And so they can either click and highlight using this drop down, or they can use the touch and highlight. Normally, I let the kids choose their preference. Um, if you're in the home tab, you have all the same basic functions. You're going to need to, if you were drawing, as you can see, I'm still drawing, 
the text icon to go back to something where you could highlight the text. So this is my draw with the mouse or touch, and then this is my text. and easy to unhighlight. So we've talked about how to create a page, new pages, inserting images, inserting PDFs, audio and video. And now we're going to talk about distributing pages to students and then how to get them back when you're working with them. So I'm gonna to go to one of my class periods with all of my students in it. And I'm going to go to vocab. And this lesson five vocab lesson that I've just created Maybe I want them on Monday, you're going to complete pages 44 to 45. On Tuesday, you're going to complete pages 46 to 47. However it is that you want them to do their work, I'll show you my lesson four that's been created already. I put the date, their bell work, and what it is that they're doing and they will go ahead and do the work right here. Each time I have it, um, I've changed the font color down here so that they respond in red so it's easy for me to see. But this is just one of many options of how you can set up your work for your students to complete. So I'm gonna put that Oh, it's already ready. So I'm going to go ahead and send this lesson four vocab out. So if you can see, I'm still on lesson three and maybe next week we're gonna move on to next lesson four and I want them to have it. So I'm gonna go to the content library where my lesson four has already been created. I'm gonna get rid of the five I just was playing with um, and go ahead and give them lesson four because that's what I need to do for next week. I'm gonna click on class notebook and I'm gonna go to distribute page. You have a couple of options here. I definitely re recommend distributing the page in each notebook. You can also distribute to just one student. So say you got a new student, we're six weeks in and you need to just give materials to that one student. That's how you can do it. You can differentiate and give one page to a small group of students to differentiate for them or you can distribute in multiple notebooks at one time. You can also delete a page that you have already distributed. So how many times have we gone to the copier, copied 100 worksheets, and then got back to our desk and realized that we had messed something up? Now that's no big deal. We didn't waste 100 pieces of paper. We just delete the page, fix it, and then redistribute it. I have done that in my first period class twice already this year. They said, Mrs. Farrell, the date's wrong. I pull the notebook, I delete the page, I fix it and I resend it out and everything is perfect. I'm just going to distribute this page to my one class period. So I chose that first option. This is lesson four vocab. So I'm going to send it to my vocab tab and I'm gonna click distribute. You're gonna get your loading screen. This will take about a minute normally doesn't take any longer than that and as soon as it has been distributed I can go to my students vocab page and look it's already there for her lesson four has already populated as soon as it finishes loading I will know that it has been sent to all of my students that they have everything that they need and they will be able to begin their work so it has finished I'm gonna exit out of the distribute page. And now I can see that Izzy has done her work. Now, when she starts working, she's going to complete her work here. And I'm gonna do one more student just as another example. I'm going to go to another notebook and I'm going to write work here. So, the student would then go in and for the two weeks that I have this vocab lesson set up for, they'll complete their work every day right here and do the assignment. 
So that is how you give the students the worksheet. So instead of passing around that piece of paper to every student in class, we're just distributing the page and then it's available in their notebook. Now the fun part, the grading. So I want to check their work. I'm going to go to review student work and I'm just gonna review it in this one class period at a time. I recommend doing that rather than reviewing from multiple notebooks at a time. I've checked their voc, or I've given them their lesson for vocab, so that's what I wanna check. So I'm gonna click vocab and then next. I wanna see how they did in lesson four. And now I have all my students. It's gonna come up alphabetical according to first name but my notebook is set up by last name. So I'm gonna switch this first and last name. And now I've got Izzy's page. And it'll jump me, so I was in Logan's, it jumped me back to Izzy. And now I can see her work and the work that she completed. I can either type a note for her and say, great job. I can go up here to the draw tool and I can give her a 100% if I want. And go through each student notebook one at a time to give them their grades and to check their work. This is the best part for me about using OneNote is the ease of grading over here. I haven't opened Charlie's yet, so that's gonna load. If you wanna be able to see more, you can click on these um, tilted books over here. It'll hover and say hide navigation. And then that way you can see more of the page. You don't wanna exit out of this until you're done grading. Um, I mean, if you get interrupted, you can always go back to it. It's not gonna go anywhere. But as I'm grading, I like to see this whole page and then go to each student's notebook one at a time and give them their feedback and grade their work. Another fantastic feature of the review student work is page locking. I'm pretty strict about due dates, so I don't want them working on this after it's been completed. So if I click page locking, I make sure all of my kids are checked, but maybe Ava has been absent for a few days, so I wanna give her some more time. I can uncheck Ava. Um, so I'll just select one student so you can see the difference. We will lock Izzy's lesson for vocab, and now you can see the little lock symbol so if I had locked everybody's, there would be lock symbols all the way down. Going to unlock Izzy so that she can continue doing her work. But maybe I said, okay, you can have one more day and I unlock her page and give her more time on that assignment and then lock it again the next day when I no longer want her working on it. So if it has been locked, it cannot be used. I'm gonna click my notebook one more time just so I can see everything. And I think that's all I wanna cover for now in the intermediates. Essentially, we've created pages, we've di inserted different types of materials, and we've distributed those materials to the students and graded them, collected them, locked them so that they cannot be edited on and taken them back. If you are interested in more of the tools, especially in the view tab or any more tools in the draw tab, I will discuss a couple of these in the advanced section. I will tell you that if you teach ESC in any form, there are many tools in here that are excellent, absolutely excellent for accommodating those students, especially on their IEPs and 504s and EPs. So thank you and um, have a good day, everybody.